just wanted to relate a little bit uh, the Palestinian uh, situation and sort of make a comparison to the African American situation in 1960. By talking about the two intifadas and, and also just give you a little bit of understanding of this notion of trying to be heard. A lot of people have dealt with the issue of this notion that of a voiceless people or people who are invisible people. And for a lot of people, for a lot of people who study this issue, they tend to uh, miss the point that after the politics is done, and like what we talked about, after the politics is done, there are people there whose lives are being affected by these political decisions and by these political situations. And there were two major uprisings that occurred in the not too distant uh, past that were called into fathers, which really brought this notion of the frustration of people who felt that they were invisible, that they were not being heard, and that the and that were the Palestinians who were locked in these camps, who had very little access to their side of the story getting out. And in response, they they responded by creating the situation which brought the attention of the world to their to their plight. Uh, when you look at the Intifada, the first Intifada beginning in 1987 and lasting to about 1993, there about, the first one was born clearly out of frustration within the Palestinian camp themselves with the fact that their organizations had failed to create the kind of change that they had expected. There was also concern, and you'll see this theme going throughout this history, about the increasing level of Israeli settlements, the fact that the Israeli settlements were expanding and growing, and this has been a constant thorn and a constant problem for the Palestinians. There was also this notion that the Palestinian leadership had failed and had failed to create the, the kind of uh, situation and, and life chances that they had expected. Both the PLO and Hamas had failed by this time and as a result, the Palestinians had an uprising, but ironically, it was sort of sponsored by those two organizations also. It represented the militancy which was growing within the area. It begins as an unarmed struggle, but it evolves into an armed struggle. And it demonstrates to the world that the people who are oppressed, people who feel that they have no other voice, will have their voices heard, either through uh, Nonviolent means or through violent means. And it represented for the Palestinians an, an effort to, to show the world that there was another side of the story, that, that they also uh, needed to be heard, their story needed to be heard. But it also opened up the weakness of their position to the world that, you know, and, uh, that they had a very weak position and that there was very little that was, that was changing and that was changing fast about their condition. The second intifada also was a result of frustration, but it was the frustration of a lack of a peace agreement. Everyone watched as President Clinton got the Palestinians and Israelis very close to peace, and it just could not get over the final hurdle. And as a result of the failure of that peace initiative, once again, the Palestinians let their voice be heard. But I think in that second time, they were expressing their frustration with their own leadership, the fact that, it, that they had gotten so close and it had failed. And I think that with the second uh, intifada, what you were seeing was again of people whose voice they felt like was not being heard. Most people know that it began, you can either begin the day before, with a Palestinian guard shooting an Israeli guard, which they were been working together, or the day after when uh, Sharon, the area of Sharon visits the uh, Temple Mount or, or, or the uh, Palestinian uh, sacred place, and the result is an explosion. But what it does, though, is it once again focuses the attention of the world on a people who thought or felt that they were not being hurt. And as a result, by maintaining this, this intifada and by maintaining this struggle, they once again push the world to view, to look at their side of the story, and to have an understanding that there was another side to the story and that they had a voice or they had a story that also needed to be told. And as a result of their intifada, I think that if 
why we're here today. It has people who it has pushed people to begin to say the present condition is not sustainable, is not workable, and as a result, we need to work towards a peace towards a settlement that might actually work. And I think that when you look at these two incidents and you look at the two uprisings, what you had was a, a people trying to get their voice out, trying to get their message out, and you know, however it was defined or however it was looked at is. You know, this often can be debated, but the reality of it was, was you had a group of people trying to get their message out because they felt that they were not being heard. And I think that if you compare that to, the, I look at it like the 1960s with the Civil Rights Movement, you had King's Movement, but by the late 1960s, people in the urban areas who thought they had no voice, who thought that no one was paying attention to their problem, you have this explosion which focuses the attention of the country and of the world to their plight also, which gives them a voice, which also leads to some change, some meaningful changes and some opportunities for meaningful changes. And uh, that's all I want to talk about today. can 